All right, y'all, what's poppin'? My name is Shedrick from Nobody Biz, and today we're talking DTF. What is it, and is it worth it for your t-shirt printing business? If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit a like and subscribe to the channel. If you've already been here and you know a little something about DTF, go ahead and drop a comment below. If you don't care about none of this and you already kind of know about DTF and you want to get to the damn point, drop below and I got a little timestamp. You can get right to the video of me setting up the printer. DTF, what is it? DTF is a pretty a new printing process. I say new, but I feel like people been on it. You know what I'm saying? It's just new to me. Uh, DTF stands for direct to film printing and it's similar to DTG. Only difference is instead of printing directly to the garment, you're printing directly to a film. That film sheet is then powdered cured and then pressed you can either ship it off and press it as a or send it off as a transfer or you can just press it to any garment um the list of the garments that it will work on is like way too long so i'll probably just somewhere in the video here 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 wherever just drop a list of all the fabrics that i know of but there's probably even more than that i don't know everything but i'll give you what i do know um if you like me and you started out with like htv and vinyl and all that i started out with vinyl and picture paper it was cool I loved it. I don't get me wrong. I'm still the sublimation guy. But at the same time, like, check it out. The prints are nice. You know what I mean? And it's like I said, this is an old shirt, been washed, whatever. It's very nice. Um, the only problem is, is it's, I wouldn't necessarily say it's a problem. It's just sometimes it's kind of difficult to find polyester tees. 100% polyester is the best tees you want to use for sublimation. And that can be like a bit of a hassle, especially now that the genre is more, or the craft, or whatever you want to call it, it's more popular now. So I feel like it's just harder to find. Whereas with DTF, like the shirt I'm wearing, I hope y'all can see that. This is DTF. And, um, what I can say about it is it can go on almost any fabric. And then what I get people with, well, especially like when I'm out, and they don't know about it. Like, oh, yeah, is that, that's, is that the picture paper that you always print? And I'm like, nah. Like, this is DTF. And this is where I get them. When I can just stretch it. I can stretch it. And then it just goes back. That's where I get them. You know what I mean? And it can, it can apply to almost any fabric. And I ain't going to say it's necessarily cheaper. I haven't worked out a price per cost. But... I kind of did with sublimation, and so with sublimation, I was looking at less than 30 cent probably a, a transfer. So with DTF, I'm pretty sure it's either less. I don't really know. It depends on where you get your supplies. Like I said, we here at Nobody Biz, we're gonna have all the film, the powder, the ink, and everything. So if you shop with us, even like our 13 by 19 inch sheets, you're only looking at 75 cent a sheet. I've sold or I've seen uh, transfer film and all that double that price so it just depends on where you shop but either way no matter where you shop the price is it's cost efficient you know what i mean like at the end of the day even if you order a transfer let's say you don't have a heat press and you just order a transfer from people do that you know what i mean like don't let the rumors stop you from using dtf it's the truth so um i guess with all that being said i'm gonna dive into the video this next part i'm gonna be showing you everything you need because we actually provide the printers and i'm gonna be setting one up so uh you know, uh, I'll do a rundown of everything you need to get started. First up, we have the A3 DTF printer itself. This is our Nobody Biz edition. Uh, I'll get into the rundown and the specifics later, but just know this can print up to 13 by 19 inches and it is a DTF printer. Next up, we have the actual film tray that connects to the printer. Um, when you do get your printer out of the box, this is what this is the only part you'll have to put together. I'll have everything set up for you. But um, just know it's a little different because if you see this bright orange and this cord, you actually have to plug it into the front and this heats up your film. I'll get into it more later, but just know it's a little different. And this does add some length. If you can tell, this adds length. So if, when you're storing the printer, you need room. All right, next on the list we have, to me, this is the essentials to put that tray together. You'll need this screwdriver. It's pretty long. It, can, it may come magnetic. It may not. Trust me, the magnetic ones are best, but we do our best to get the best ones out. Um, this is more like a socket one. 
that's gonna go up under the tray. I don't know if you saw. If you saw the tray, you'll know what I mean. Um, these are your your actual connectors that's gonna connect it to the printer itself, and uh, you'll get this bag, and it has the bolts that you need. If that will focus with that shine, let's see. Okay, there we go. I got an extra fuse in there, and then I throw in a little sheet of um, holographic sticker paper, and I'll show you why later. Um, you'll also get like random extra dampers. Like as you can see, the dampers for the white are a little different, but just know they have a bigger filter. You get these little tips for like your cleaning supplies, and you might even get like little tubes and hoses. So um, yeah. All right, then you'll get. This is the actual what you're gonna need to hook up the AccuRip software and then AccuRip 10. Uh, we do add a syringe kit. Basically, uh, if you already get them from us, you know, but 20 ml, 120 ml for 10 mls with needles and a pair of set of gloves. You'll need these to purge the lines. All right, real quick, power cord. This will power up the printer. USB cord. This will hook up. This will hook the printer up to your laptop or computer. All right. Then we throw in ink. Um, you'll get two sets like this, and our eight ounces. This is our four ounce set. You'll either get two of the four ounces, or you'll just get eight ounces out of the box. Um, it comes in CM or cyan, magenta, white, yellow, and black. Um, please, please, when you're ordering ink, um, make sure. It has the seal. We have a lot of copycats out there. So um, just be very mindful of that. If it's not on our Etsy, it's on our website. And that's not focusing. Hopefully that focuses. But just look for our sticker. Um, it's kind of like authentic. All right. You also get cleaner. It's cleaner print heads. And you'll also get moisturizer to wet cap. And I'll explain wet capping a little, as best as I know, um, later. All right. Then we add, uh, I like to give everybody an option. So we added white and black powder into the kit. Um, this is the eight ounces, so you won't get the eight ounce. We, we give out two four ounces with the kit, but we have the eight ounce and we have the pound even available. Um, anything over four ounces will include a, a scoop. So you can scoop your powder out, do what you got to do, sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, I got little techniques where I show how I sprinkle. Maybe I'll do that in this video, or maybe I'll do it another one, either way. But like I said, uh, white, black, powder. Like I said, look for those seals. Lastly, we have um, um, we have film. I, like I said, I like options. So in the package, we give you 50 A4 or A3 sheets, which is similar to 11 by 17s. I'll probably put that somewhere in the video so you can see. And then we also add uh, 50 A4 sheets, which is about half of this. So each cap um, or each bottle of ink, it, actually each bottle of ink and the cleaner will come with its own little cap. These are very useful. Uh, you could just pop off the lid and then squeeze so yeah you'll get five or six of those actually six you get six of those and um those are just screwed directly on top so after you open it unseal you can just hit those all right so first step what i always tell people is hook up your paper tray or your film tray so here we go it's got some length on it so for people who are trying to size this and figure out where they want their printer to go, keep in mind, the tray is almost the same size as the printer. So keep that in mind, but it's gonna stick out this way. It's gonna add to the printer this much. So that's a lot of weight, but this is how it's gonna go. Um, first things first, what I would do, and hopefully y'all can see this. Um, you're gonna take this, the one I told you that was like a socket, and um, there's gonna be four already attached. I don't keep the attached ones. Um, it's a personal preference thing, but the four that are attached here, I don't keep them there because what'll happen is when you get like basically I'm gonna I'm gonna do my arms right now, right? 
You see in this wrap because it comes wrapped up. It doesn't. It, in the box, it just it's not naked like this. It's it's all wrapped up, and that those wrap that wrap is sticking to the screws. That's all that is. But um, anyway, so yeah, basically you get two of these, one for each side, and basically it's gonna go like this. But if you were to do it like this and keep the bolts, what'll happen is, for one, you get this little gap. Hopefully y'all can see that gap. You get a little gap right here in between. And then I wanna say that gap prevents this from lining up to this. So uh, definitely keep that in mind. Um, like I said, you can do whatever you want at this point. It's your printer, but um, I removed these. And that doesn't fit. So we're gonna go by hand. So yeah, I use the same ones that are there from the beginning. So I take these two off and then use them. Cause who knows, it could make it tighter. Like it could make your uh, legs fit a little more secure, but I haven't had an issue. So like I tell you all the time, I can only tell you what I know. All right, so basically you just line those up here um if you want to be OCD about that part I say just go whatever one you pick or however how you pick just make sure you do it the same way like if you pull all the way back pull all the way back over here if you pull all the way this way pull all the way this way hopefully y'all can see yeah y'all can see okay yeah either way I'm gonna try to go for a middle me personally and I'm gonna flip my bolt around Start with the hand motions for the majority of it. Move that so y'all can actually see what I got going on. And um, I did say I was going to dive into it further. So I guess this would be a good time while we're wasting time. Or you know what I'll do? Instead of doing that, I'll speed through this whole process. And then we'll get to talking about all this. How about that? Okay. Nice and tight. It's on there. And like I said, hopefully y'all can see this. Uh, let's see. Yeah, like, that's about the best I can get it. See how there's no gap in there, though? You can almost see there's no gap. And it's ready to go. Um, so once you get to this point, like I said, you have your legs established. I'll talk a little bit more now about this part. This this whole orange platen part uh, heats up. And it warms up. And you'll be able to control how much it warms up with this knob over here. You'll be able to turn that and establish how much heat you want to um, apply to this. And this plugs up with this. So that plugs up there. You see, it works like that. Boom, boom. Um, and the reason this is important, because there's a lot of these printers that are just modified and, and are converted. And um, um, basically shop around. Do your research, even when, it, even if you include me into your research, do your research on the DTF printer that you do buy, because a lot of people just take a regular printer and do little to nothing to it and then call it converted or call it modified. You can tell, like if I was to show you how this printer looked from the start, you would not believe what's going on right here. You know what I mean? So just do your research. And then, like I said, if it doesn't have anything to heat up your film, what may tend to happen, and like I said, I've only known this from speaking with people, uh, basically you'll go to print, and when you do print, the ink will be a little bit more wet because it lays it down, especially if you're dealing with a printer that doesn't drop, I mean drops a lot. So bigger droplets, you will have to wait before you powder because you don't want it to be running. Because then it'll overpowder it and you'll get this thick feel. It'll almost feel like a transfer, like a Nina transfer, a Nina 3G transfer. Whereas this, it's warming as it goes, so it's nice and thin. So, so by it's like literally as soon as it's done printing, I rush over to the powder, powder it immediately, and then start the curing process. So that's just something to think about. But um, I'm gonna keep going on with step one. So you got it hooked up, you got your arms on there. So now the best thing to do is, I know you can see these little gold prongs. You want to line these two holes up with those gold prongs. If you do this, you should get 
you should get like a uh a full lineup. But then again, I don't know, maybe this paper tray is new. So yeah, it does sit up a little bit more. So maybe I do need to add those bolts back. Yeah, I'm probably gonna have to add those bolts back because as you can see, if I line it up with those prongs, I'm not sitting where I need to be sitting. So I won't even <clears throat> uh, do y'all like that. So I'm gonna pause the video, add those bolts back, and we'll see how it lines up. All right, y'all. <clears throat> Full transparency time. <laughs> um, I have a couple of these printers running, and basically I had the older models. So basically as the model upgraded because I'm stingy like that and I want to try it out so I know what to tell my customers, this is a remodel. So this was an older system, but now it has new guts and it's with the upgraded system because I wanted like my tray originally that was on here. It didn't have all this. I didn't have the circulation system on my ink and all that. So there for the hookup is different to me and this hookup makes so much sense now that I'm diving into it. Live on camera, you know what I'm saying? Play as fuck up. Uh, if you look, and hopefully you can tell, now there is a little gap in there. Just enough. Can you see? Hopefully y'all can see that. There's just enough gap. And with that gap, these won't get hot. Not only that, the most important part is when you go to line it up now. Hopefully y'all can see up under there. The lines actually line up. So basically, what you want to do here is uh, dive into your little bag, and you want to get four of the screws that are kind of fat. Should be four screws in there. You don't want the little ones though. The little ones go to something else. Those, the, the two little ones go to those gold prongs you see. So you don't want those right now. You want the fatter. So basically. So get your hands on. You don't want you don't want that screw. Hopefully that's focused. You don't want that one. You want this one. Much bigger. Alright. Alright, being seen, you want to take your screwdriver. Line it up. Line it up as best as possible. Then you want to get up under here. And I hope y'all can see. Yeah, then you want to get up under here and screw it in. You want to grab another one. Okay, as you can see, I'm slightly still holding it up. I'm not making it do <laughs> the old screw in the mouth trick. My baby told me that. <laughs> I'm not doing it, making it do all the work. You want to get over here. And get this one in. You don't got to go fully tight right now. Uh, while I'm screwing in. I'm gonna make sure y'all can see. I can't even see. Okay, so if you run into this problem like I am, that means one of your screws may be too tight. So I'm gonna come back over here. Loosen this one up a bit. Because you want it in there, but not crazy. Because at the end of the day, it has to fit. And like I said, as I'm screwing these, I'm watching the top as well. So I'm going to put this piece to come over. So. All right. so now I'm kind of letting it go and do its own thing. Because I got two in. When you get two in, you pretty much can let it, let it help you. But other than that, don't be lazy. My line 
lighting is a little off and I don't like that, but I'm hoping once I screw it in, it'll work better. Once I screw them in tight. If not, and if these don't line up to the gold prongs, what I would have to do is start all the way over. Uh, and remember I was talking about the pushing the arm part up. I have to push the arm down. So instead of leaving it even, that means I'd have to push the arms all the way back. But we ain't trying to do all that. So I'm hoping that uh, once I keep this all tight, it'll look good. Because I do a lot of like, I do a lot of what I feel is necessary, but I also don't do stuff that I don't think is necessary. So when I used to set my friends up back in the day, these specifically, I didn't even use the gold prongs. I tried it my first printer and I broke it because I beat it too tight. So ever since then, I don't even screw in the little screws. But you know, for the sake of the video, I will. Don't be like me. Don't learn the hard way. That's gonna be tight though. All right, now you're gonna go back. You're about to go back and resort to those tiny screws I was talking about. And when I say tiny, I'm talking about a tiny. You'll get two. Hopefully y'all can see that. They see the trays are already pretty much here and together. So now what you're going to do, and let me make sure y'all can still see. Oh, yeah, y'all got a pretty good view. Actually, you know what I'll do? I'll pause it and lift y'all up a little bit. Not at the bottom. Or right, before I do that, I'll go ahead and plug this up. It has, it has like a little thing right here, a little clip. Hopefully, y'all can see that. I'll pull it under. It has a little clip. Or I'll do it when I get it up there. I'll just do it when I get up there so y'all can really see. How about that? All right, we're back. Um, so yeah, not back to that piece I was talking about. There's like a little, uh, there's a little. Hopefully, y'all can see that. It's a little piece right there. See, you see my nail? It sticks out. That goes into this one. Same piece goes up top, and it just pushes in, and then you can. Be fancy. You can you can even tuck it in here if you want, as long as it doesn't interact with your film. So make sure to look as far as where it's going. But matter of fact, if you really want to get OCD, I probably can tuck it. There's enough gap now in between this to where I probably can tuck it. But I don't care about that little yellow showing. Um. So back to the screws. I got my little screw on here. Like I said, if you get a magnetic screwdriver, that's what's up. If you don't, I truly apologize. Like, it comes random with the printer. So, hopefully you get the magnetic one, though, because, baby, that's like a whole, um, that's like a lifesaver. Because when I, like, if you drop screws like me, I just drop the screw. If you drop screws like me, there's nothing to just grab it, you know what I'm saying? So, very top tier. All right. Let's see. It's doing what I was. It's doing what I was worried about. You see, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> I've done this before, so I know not to go too tight, and I know to tell y'all not to go too tight. You just need it flat. You don't want to be so loose that. Some of the screw is sticking up, but at the same time, you don't want to be so tight that you're forcing it in. And I'm going to try to go real slow so y'all can see what I'm talking about. I'm just doing it enough to get it in there, and I'm done. Like I'm not even doing it hard. And to check your work, what you can do is just put your finger in here. If your finger can run by smooth... You did a good job because that film needs to run past that. And y'all didn't see the videos from before or y'all didn't see the printers from before. So you may not know, but 
the sturdiness of this film tray is ridiculous. This is the sturdiest one I've ever had. Like, it's staying straight. The ones from before, they would lean down. And I would have to literally, when I get one of these bottles empty, I'd have to put it up under here like this just to keep it straight up. But as you can see, this one, even if I push it, it's good to go. Not only that, my first printer, it leaned so bad that in here, I'll point with this, in here, it leaned so bad that this lifted up and my film would get caught under the tray while printing. So, like I said, the little subtle upgrades are amazing. Um, not to mention over here on the corners, you probably saw before I added this tray, I had a little scratch marks from where you can see the tray was rubbing up against the paint. Now there's a little bit of gap, probably enough for me to get my nail and maybe two, maybe the size of my nail twice in there. That's how thin the little line is. That's that little gap makes a world of difference. But other than that, step one is complete. All right. Uh, step two is fill the ink. Tray's good. Now it's time to fill the ink. You have all your colors here. Uh, this is your mixer. This is going to mix the ink. I, I'm going to do just a quick dive in on, you know, the differences because, like I said, we offer quality products and I need y'all to know. So, um, basically, we have a mixer right here. I, I um, My best analogy for this is like a cement mixer because the white ink that we provide is chemical based and it will separate it within the tank. So if you, like I said, do your research, including ours, do your research. Um, you'll see people shaking cartridges, doing all kinds of stuff to get this white moving. The white must stay moving. So we, you know, keeping it nice and lazy for y'all. This is also something that's new. It has like a rubber seal in here, so it's not so difficult. It used to be just straight down. I like that seal addition because you might be able to lean it without spilling it. Um, but anyway, the cement mixer, the white ink, <laughs> is going to mix that. Um, your ink is going to go down through this bottom tube, come through into the printer, and there's a circulation tank. I'll go over that when I do the purging, but there's a circulation in there um, to keep it moving. It's going to go into your dampers, come back out, and run back through here. So basically, like this one, see, like basically, there's two white tanks. There's one here and one there. So it's just going to be pouring. I'm thinking it's going to pour and pull. Pull, pour back in. And that reminds me of a fish tank. You know, the filter in the fish tank. So we'll see. We're going to dive in now. Um, but, um, yeah, I, keep, I like to keep this behind it. Just out of my way. You can even tuck it right here as a good little spot. Keep it on tuck. And the little button up here, I'll go back over that when I pull the camera back. But there's a little button to keep that mixing. But all in all, we're going to... Uh, I'll do one color at a time just to play it safe. We'll just start with yellow. You want to pull the top out. And you want to pull the air plug out. This is your air plug. Uh, that OCD kicking in. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay, oh, I don't know if y'all, like, even if it's like a little string of <laughs> thread on my shirt, oh, yeah, gotta yank that, like, right now. Anyway, um, when you get your bottles, your bottles will come sealed. Uh, I don't have the seals on mine right now, because these are just my bottles, but basically you want to open it, and when you do open it, there's going to be a seal. It's very easy to remove. We don't, it's not that harsh. You just peel it off, and you should be good to go. And then inside of your kit, like I said before, you're going to get these little lids and you'd add the lid. I don't want to use these because they, they're for a customer. But I got a bunch of old ones like this laying around from when we first started. So I'm just going to use that. Mind you, these black ones do not work as good as... Uh, they do not work as good as the clear one that I showed. But they work. So... Um, Basically, you just fill it up. Take your time. Nothing crazy. And I recommend going about halfway up to that yellow. Because you can always add more after you purge. You don't want to pass the yellow, though. So I won't even say halfway. Like, right up under the yellow. That's good for me. And then... Oh, wrong way. Tighten that up while it's in there, which kind of makes these cool, and then you're good to go. Less mess. 
But just in case you keep a mess, I didn't put this in the what you need video, but as you can see in the background, I got the Lysol and I got the paper towels because you never know when a mess will arrive. Okay, so clean that up. Looks great. Ink is in the bottle. I'm gonna clean the tip of the bottle. I am going to speed this video up. I just want to do one more while y'all here. So y'all can just see the difference of so I can see the difference. Oh, I'm gonna plug this back up. So you plug the top one back up, but then you um those do kind of gotta be forced in. But you leave this one out, that's the air one. Okay. As far as black, so y'all can get a good gist of what's going on. I am going to use the ones you actually get with the kit. So y'all can see like basically I would have been done. And, like I said, if you're here and you want to leave a comment, help me out. Leave me a comment. Which leads do you think I should provide? Because I have a good amount of both. So, y'all tell me. Y'all tell me what lids you think. Because, like, just now, me using the black lid, I made that look easy. Especially how I closed it inside of the tank. So, let me know. But, anyway, we're going to go come back with the black. Just like these, like, you got to be careful. Because as soon as you flip it, it's pouring. We're going to see. Oh, actually not. Like one drop. But anyways, this is why I like these. Take the air one out. Because you could just go. Like to me, the squeeze is much faster. Maybe it's a mind thing. Maybe it takes the same amount of time. I don't know. I just feel like you got way better squeeze control with these. And then, like I said, you do got a little drop right here. But it's nothing crazy. You can just, if you take your time and control it, it's not that bad. Then, like I said, we're gonna clean up. Clean up the top. Keep it nice and clean. Nice and clean. And then this one has like a little cap instead of the twist. So that one has a cap. So low key, you wouldn't even have to go back to the, the shipping cap. This one has a cap too, but I've I've had these sitting and they've leaked. But I don't know. Y'all tell me which one. Y'all let me know. Y'all let me know. I might just start shipping both out because they work great either way. And like I said, I got plenty of those. They just sitting around. So you know, either way, this is from our sis. Like I was used to use these for sublimation. So we'll see. All right, force that in. Uh -huh. Without making bubbles. You see that little bottom of the tray trick? Alright. And then we're going to keep it moving. And then, like I said, I'll just speed through the rest of this. Alright. I don't know if y'all could tell with everything all sped up like that. But um, I was putting them in, closed, opening them, squeezing, closing before I pulled out. So I'm really liking the black lids. I might keep it on the black lids. But it, anyways, um, as far as white. Now, once you get it in the printer, you ain't got to worry about all that shaking. But before you get it in the printer, when you take that white bottle, it could be separated by the time you get it. And I don't know if the camera is going to really show. Like this bottle's doing pretty good. It's pretty fresh. But um, just shake it as best as you can. I say shake it for at least like a minute or two. And like I said, this is the only shaking you'll have to do with the bottle. Like I said, there's other printers out there. You got to actually pull the carts out and shake them. So I say just shake it up. Get as you can. Get it like you can. You can even, just so it's not so full, you can even add your lid. And this is what I was talking about. Like it's closed right now. So I can do it closed. Get it in. And then I was opening it while it's already in. That way any drop. But as you can see, then I can close it. Cause like I said, this was just to, um, this was just to get some room. And see how there's that one drop? That's literally it. Cause it's already closed. So I don't know, I'm really liking the black. You wouldn't be able to do that with the clear. So, now past this video, I'll probably be sending out the black ones. At least until I run out. 
All right, now that you have room, so you got room now, shake it up. Yeah, you can hear that. You can hear that ink shaking now. And then this too, this is a good little recommendation. Hopefully y'all can see that. Yeah, that's a good little look too. Like basically, have flip it upside down. Let it just sit in between. Every now and then, like when you got your bottles just sitting, and let's say you don't use a full bottle, flip the white. So it don't just ride, ride to the bottom. Even if it's like everyday thing, like basically have it upside down for a day, then come back the next day, have it like this. Then the next day, flip it back. That way it's just moving in the bottle. Cause I don't want you to just, I don't want it to separate in the bottle. Then you add it to this and you're like, what's going on? You know what I mean? So always be precautious. DTF is, it, it's work, but I feel like people over exaggerate the amount of work it is. So, but all right, that's enough for now. Enough for me anyway. I'm gonna go ahead and add this ink in there. So I'm playing with it. Um because because um because there are two dampers with white, I'm gonna add a little more. You don't have to do that step, but I'm just doing it. Like you said, you just don't want it in there. I'm actually trying to fill it at least to the white though. And then like I said, I'm going to close it while it's in the tank, which I like that method. That's going to be my new one, telling people how to do it, because then you're just there. And you can just clean it up. Easy peasy, nice and clean. Like I said, I got like one drop there from doing it too fast. But other than that, pretty clean. All right. And then we add our plug back, and step two is complete. And step two is complete. <laughs> Put it in there. Okay. There we go. Like I said, make sure you use the bottom of your tray. Don't just push down. This is this is screwed in. But just use the bottom of your tray. Can y'all see? Yeah. Use the bottom of your tray. But there it go. All right, y'all. Step three would be that power source. You gotta plug that in the back. You know, you'll know because of how it's fitted. It fits in perfect. And then you have a switch in the back. So you're gonna turn that on. And then you have a power button in the front um, that you can turn on. Just hold that. Crank it up. All right, on. Now, me personally, to get the debt to get the printhead to actually move, what I would do is there's a middle button, there's a power button, there's a sheet button for if your roller, if your sheet don't roll through. Um, there's a little drop in it as a trash. If you hold that little drop, that's like a print head clean. So what I would do is start the print head clean and then, cause look, white ink is already flowing. I don't know if y'all can, is that on camera? I'm all in the way. Yeah, like right there, there's already white ink flowing through the tube. But, um, um, oh, and I can push the little, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it around front so y'all can see what I'm talking about. But, um, uh yeah, I'm gonna hold that button like it's gonna do a print head, and then once it starts and it moves, that's when I'll turn it off from the back. Wait till it moves though. like that once it moves now think about it you're all free and it already started pulling some yellow but you don't want the printhead clean to do all the work for you oh it pulled all, everything it's up blue okay so um you don't want the printer to do all the work for you so let me see y'all angle gotta work on them angles let's see can y'all see oh yeah i can see pretty good all right 
So in here, there's a one screw. Back to this handy dandy. All right, we're gonna tie that loose. One screw, like I said, magnetic. If not, you grab it. I keep my screw in place so I don't forget that it goes there. And then this whole thing will come off. Keep that in place. Now, once you do that, you will see you can freely touch the dampers, do what you gotta do. So what I do is I yank all mine out. Don't be afraid of your printer, you know what I'm saying? It's yours, you're gonna be working on it. It's like getting a used car, you know what I'm saying? Or shit, even a new car. It's yours to play with. So, as you can see, these just pop up. These white dampers are new for me with the bigger filters, but they look to be legit. I think you could just, it looks like you just pull them up though. Let me see. We all learning today. After some work, they pull up. All right, once you get it all out, kind of remember your order and then like I said this goes with the circulation of the white with the different dampers much bigger filter um, and then as far as the colors go you know, it's, uh, it's in order so basically what that means is oh I think there's a white so this will be yellow. We're gonna try it out. We gotta figure it out one, one way or another. The 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 they're already popped. Actually you can kind of see it at the bottom, but you wanna get that syringe in there. Now mind you, we're gonna send you a syringe kit. It won't have 420s, but if you want to upgrade to the large, we do have those on the site. But you'll have these. And I figure you can use the 20 for the white and then use the 10. So either way it go, you're only purging, so you don't really need a big one, it's just 20 works a lot faster. So, 20 works faster and I'm spoiled. So I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Um, what I didn't notice while I was gone is the white was here, but it wasn't over there. So I pulled this out and it filled up the back. Just a little tip. That's something I feel like I left out. But anyway, start this purging um, right here. So you basically, you're gonna take the damper, yeah, you can see. Take the damper. You're going to stick your syringe in there. You're going to kind of try to hold it. And you're going to just pull. And you want to fill that up. You, the goal is to get it to where there's no bubbles. And I didn't take this. This was the first step, actually. When purging. You want to take the plug off. Because the same ink that you pulled out, you can add it back. No need to waste ink. You know what I mean? If you want to add it back to your bottle instead, that's cool too. That wouldn't actually be a bad idea. It's up to you. But and then if you can, the little secret I do, see that bubble how it's moving around? You can move it to where it's going to pull. And then pull it. Cool way to get just the bubble. See what I'm saying? Still got a bubble, but it's only like one little one. So, good to go on yellow. And then, I'm going to do the rest of these and speed it up. All right. <laughs> I noticed something while I was doing this. You see that little drawback in the yellow? You don't want this. So, if you get, if it starts looking like this, go ahead and hit it again. Just to avoid air. Because if you leave that air then the um, the printhead clean and our, the ink purge will have to handle it. And there's no need for that. So go ahead and get that out of there. That could have simply been my syringe could have been like not pushed all the way in too. Okay. 
Actually, look, it's filling back up. It's bubbling as it sits there. So, I don't know. I might have to put a new damper in. I don't know if y'all can see that. It's almost bubbling no matter what I do. So, we'll see when it's printing. But it shouldn't be doing that. The black isn't. So, I might have to replace that damper from the beginning. With one of the new ones. Because I don't like that. See, it's almost like it's air coming through the bottom. Which, of course, always going to happen on camera. <laughs> but, um, at least we know. You know what I mean? We know it can get to the bottom of it. I'm keeping my two white ones separate. And it's not even blue yet. It's magenta. Yeah, that yellow damper's got to go. Also, could be maybe I stuck it in too far. Because just now doing the red, I barely stuck the syringe in. Maybe I just penetrated it too much. Obviously, it don't take all that. The magenta's, magenta's doing really good. So, that's a new technique, I guess. You don't gotta <laughs> overly shove it in. Just a tip. Trying to get as much of those bubbles out as possible. Yeah, magenta's looking good. Black's looking good. That yellow's going to have to go. So once I get done. shake <laughs> if you know about ink you already know what's going on <laughs> maybe do one more do one more but it's looking good so yeah the um Maybe that yellow was just my fault. But like I said, just to be sure, I don't want to take no chances. We do have these. I'm gonna try it out. See if it gets in there better. If that's the case, I'd use these. Oh yeah. But see, it's the pull on it is not good enough. Definitely gets up in the cart better though. Yeah, that's not quick enough. Worth the shot. So, 
<laughs> that's y'all for y'all. I'll be struggling, but um, I can't get it to come through. So I'm just gonna run the yellow. Maybe it's a um, maybe it's this new circulation system. It does seem to have like different areas that I'm not used to. So I'm hoping it'll just pull through on its own. I don't like doing that, but I, if I can't get in through, I gotta do what I gotta do. Um. This is a cool little part um, to have in the video so y'all can see mistakes sometimes can be cool. All right, so see how this yellow is like half empty? There's air, too much air leaking out the bottom of this because all the other colors are solid. So basically when you want to replace a damper, all you really got to do is pull from here, pull that tube off. At first, you want to put this in the. You want to put this inside of the printer, just to pop that bottom, and then you just want to add it back, or add it to this new damper. Once you have it to the new damper, like I said, go ahead and purge it out. Don't go in so far, which is what I think I did. Don't be scared of it either. <laughs> See how that yellow is solid? Get that air out. Much, the better you purge, the better your life is going to be, <laughs> if you ask me. As much of that air out as possible. That's good for me. And now that, let's see how it's holding this color. And we'll just hope that the white does the same thing. Um, but other than that, I think we're complete. We are gonna see. Like I said, I'm gonna do a whole ink flush and hopefully, hopefully with the ink flush, we'll set it up and see what's going on. But yeah, I don't know why the white. I don't know why the white wouldn't pull through. Uh, oh, two. If you want to get this little extra ink, you can always put this in here. Plug it with your finger. Plug it with your finger. Put that in there. And then you can you can get as much of that out as possible. I mean, if you're cheap like me, that's a little bit of ink. <laughs> Couple drops. Not bad, though. All right. I'm going to pull it under the drop. And we good. I guess I can show to me putting it back together or putting it back inside. So you got your yellow. You want to remember this order. It's the same in order of the tank. So yellow, then you'll go black, then you'll do your left white, white right. Oh, wait, fool. Hard to line up. 
because they're skinnier, but they, um, although they're skinnier, they, um, they skin it with a bigger, bigger filter. How that work? So yeah, the only thing that's out of order is really the white, but it plays the middle. And this kind of just sits in here. Oh, actually, yellow and black go through. What I did with the magenta. line it up you can do that thick white and there's like little things you can you'll see the little track it looks like a track like a running track and you want to line up your colors in that running track I'm doing this you should be able to get them in there tight Once they're in there tight, add this back. There's going to be two little grooves over here. Hopefully y'all can see that. I got the table wobbling. All right, yeah. Two little, little nugs, little pegs. You want to line those pegs with these two holes. Once you get them lined up, you're going to come up under, and it's back lined up. Then you're going to add that screw back to hold it in place. They keep bumping the light. All right. Yeah, then you want to screw that back. All right, now it's back. We'll move all these out of the way. And um, what I'll do is turn it back on. And it should be still doing that print head clean. So flip the switch back on. Then come back around. I'm going to bring y'all back around here. So I'm going to pause it and bring y'all around so y'all can see the front. All right. So for this side, you have this button for your power. You go hold that. Turns it back on. That middle drop is what I was talking about as far as the print clean. You got the trash one and you got the paper. If it's blinking like that, that means something's going on. It's either printing, print head clean, something. On this side, this sets that heat that on the bottom I was talking about. I like to set it. I like to set it at um a little bit under 13. If I can get it right at 13, it's hard to get it perfect. Oh, cause I'm on camera. Up, oh, up, oh, up. Oh. That's close enough for me. Um, and then this right here is your mixer. So if you hit this. What that's gonna do is start mixing. And you can tell that basically it's mixing. Hopefully, I can see that because I can't see y'all. But like I said, I got the air loose and all that. That's so cool. That's what I was talking about. See how it's pulling ink? That's pulling ink from the top cartridge damper part. So I just wanted to add that in there. All the colors. Yeah. So it's literally circulating. And it does this. I don't I can't really say yet, but I'm thinking about every five minutes, if that, it does this. And then it also just randomly starts spinning on and off. So cool new feature. Definitely check it out. Alright, so now what you're gonna wanna do 
out of the way is um actually I might have to do this. Let's see. Let's see if it'll fit. Cause you're gonna need to run this and um the drive. So it's pretty decent size cord. So we'll see what's happening. Also, I left out on the stuff you need. You need some coffee, preferably Starbucks. All right, let me try to hook it up. Oh. All right. Like I said, I'm not doing anything special off camera. All I'm doing is hooking this plug up to the back. It's the only cord. It's the only slot left that can take a cord. So you'll know exactly where you need uh, to put it. Keep this still. All right, so basically, yeah, you wanna hook the printer up. Not only do you wanna hook it up, I actually gotta use my, <laughs> I gotta use my girl laptop because this won't work on a Mac. It has to be, uh, you know, it has to be Windows. Oh, uh, what do I need? What do I need? Don't need this one. Okay, so anyway, I already have the D drive installed on this one. So I'm still going to be using 9. But like I said, the new one will come with a new one of these and 10. And you can just hook it up how you want to hook it up. But mine ain't nothing broke. 10 is more so for like newer printers. Not a ten. It just doesn't matter. It's the same, or not the same, but it's very similar. So um, this is another tip. Don't have to do this, but I take mine off the card to get that card out of the way. Um. Um. You can go to your manual, and then when you go to your manual, you. Will, you want to basically download the Navi, which I'm not sure if basically going to the printer driver. I already had this set up, so it may already be on here, but I'm going to download it again just so y'all can see. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Now that you've seen all that, I'm going to switch over to like on screen. Alrighty then, um, hopefully y'all can see everything fine. Hopefully you can see my mouse and everything. <laughs> Um, but what we, and I'm gonna try to speak a little louder because I don't know how this internal mic is gonna work. But um, all right, here we go. I'm gonna plug it in. Oh, well, before I even plug it in, the first thing I'm gonna go do is um, you're gonna want to search antivirus. Well, you're gonna want to spell it right. Um, yeah, the virus protection because to for this to work, you're gonna have to turn all of that off. So, this is where we're going to go with it. Uh, actually, it's already off. It looks good to go. Yeah, it looks good to go. So, we're going to try it and see what happens. <laughs> Worst case scenario, I might have to go run and go get my 9. But yeah, you want to go to manual uh you want to go to <laughs> that's just me this is me forgetting my resetter and i had to download it again don't judge me when you go to install the navi you want to make sure you got the printer actually set up and then agree is our latest version uh, yeah this gonna pop up, but as you can see, it's still moving back here, so you're good to go. You can hit OK, but it's gonna keep popping up if you do. And I don't know, once I get this Navi, once I get the Navi installed, maybe I can double back and, um, you know, uh, use the actual tin.
But like I said, it's not broke, so I'm not going to even focus on fixing it right now. What I'll do is I'll just run the 9 and then keep it moving from there. All right. Uh-oh. And I may need to plug up my charger. How about that? All right. So we're going to charge this bad boy up. Um, oh, let me get that screen. Yeah, we here. Okay, as I said, like it's already downloaded. It's already downloaded. So, uh, I'm going to just hit reinstall just for the sake of the video. Let it do its thing. Um, and then like from here, basically we're going to download the Accurip, which I want to say I deleted it, um, but it may be on here as well. Um, I'm going to do the, I'll do the, the Accurip, get it set up. I'll show y'all if it does the whole side by side, I have a fix for that too. It's on the cards, but if not, it'll just pop up. But like I said, we're available 24 and more. Like if you get a printer from me, just don't hesitate to reach out, whether it be uh, on Facebook. You can video call me. Uh, we got our number listed, email, all that. So don't hesitate to reach out. I um, and I, like I said, I got a little, I got a few tricks up my sleeve. So basically, I can help with that. Um, and I, as you see, watching the video, it's still stuff that I don't necessarily know, and I'm learning myself. You know what I mean? So, uh, we can just figure it out together. But, I don't know why this one is taking longer. I should have left it how it was. So yeah, I'll probably speed through this if I can even do that on there. Yeah, and that's how you get rid of that real quick. So I already got it, so there's no need to sit there and waste all that time. Next, I'm going to go back here, and I'll go to RIP Software, and actually download that and have that going to better... Better way to waste time, basically. Um, you um, know, it's gonna create two accurips. You're gonna use the white one. Um, like I said, I'll probably double back and um. I'll probably double back and do the 10 to see if it's the same way. But um, the 10 is going to just be great. Accurate 10 is going to be great for those people that are using like a XP 15,000 or 8,500. You know, the, Epson just came out with the new Eco Tanks. That's going to be good for people like that because at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, you'll have you'll be able to you know load up your you'll be able to load up your printer you know what I mean so that's a um, so I'm just gonna see if I can allow them It's acting like it's letting me allow it. Oh, 
okay so when I do that then it goes over here all right cool so it's allowed and then now what I'll do is um um now that everything's downloaded I want to go back to that one screen I want to go back here and go back here just to give y'all a little heads up. I'm planning on having a video in here, basically. I have a video. Basically, the video I'm filming now, I'll have it in here. So that way you can just see. If not, I'll at least have the link. And getting the link down. So, now let's see if I'm going to need the dongle. Alright, so I'm gonna go grab that. First off, before I even try that, we're gonna experiment. See if I put the tin in. And then. Okay, no. Alright, so I'm gonna go grab that. So, got the accurate dongle key. And all the dongle key is that little thing I showed. The little. Basically the USB drive. All right, here we are. Welcome to AccuRip. All right, um, now from here, what I want to do is um, first things first, what I want to do is since we added the printer, uh, let's see. Okay, you want to go here. What I do is I double click on that. And then I go to, I don't know if it's printer settings or do I just click it? I forgot. I think it just click this. And this, actually, no, I don't need that screen. So, find your printer. I probably can do it from the file menu in the RIP software. But, um, go to printer settings. Okay, yeah, you want this screen. None of this really matters because it's not a normal printer. Uh, but what I do is go to maintenance and power ink flush. This is key. Because I mean, even though I did those print head cleans, I want to do an ink flush. And what an ink flush does is it pulls even more ink through the system. And it's going to all get dumped into that waste tank and or that little bottle back there in the back of the printer. Now, mind you, if you read this, it'll just basically tell you you can only do this once every 12 hours. So be mindful. I try to do it at least once a day. Some people think it's wasting ink, but the way I see it, I like clean prints. I'm hoping with the circulation system... It won't be as bad, but and it'll tell you how long it takes to do that. If I can speed through it, I will. All right, it's complete. And then what I want to run, I'm gonna run y'all through this really, really quick. First of all, let me see if I have to go download this. Actually, it's good to go. If this isn't already here, basically you just go to it's in it's in the the first drive where you saw the printer manual and all that. You'll see for you'll see uh ICC print profile and you can just download that. Uh, first things first. Page margin. Actually, that's okay. Um, first of all, it might come in centimeters. I've already had this up. When you first get it, it might be in centimeters like that. So. You want to switch that to inch, and then, uh, yeah, switch that to inch, and then you want to go to, make sure it's in English, uh, then you want to go to template, and then you want to change your template to square, you want to zero this out, wow, and don't hit enter, yeah, you want to zero that out. Zero that out, and as you can see, that's just changing where the, the 
the template goes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set mine to A3, which would be 11, 6, 9, 5, 16.54. You got to know the inches when you're in this business. Um, I don't remember. Yeah. It's not even changing, so I'm gonna leave that. I like to put mine bold because I'm trying to see. And then what you can do is save it as A3 and then apply it. Hit OK. Um, I don't know why that's not showing. Hold on, let me go back to the layout. All my layout pretty much looks good. Um, except this part. Let me see if I can change this to 13 by 19. Yeah, why does that little dot? I do not know. I wonder if I change this. And the output is going to be whatever you load inside. Um, you also can double back and, like, basically you can come here and then I can do. save this one as well which is a4 and then apply. Yeah, I don't know why I'm getting just a little dot It's short 10 by 10. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to move on for now. But um, basically when you go to your printers. And like I said when you get to 10 downloaded. You'll have more printers within this list. But don't freak out. You want to go here. And then your port matters. You want to download the port that matters, which is this one. Um, print immediately, but you have options. Check paper size off. I do my. This is a decent resolution, but I just do 14 by 14. I find that to be the best prints. Like I said, you saw the shirt I was wearing. Uh, I'm doing the settings that I used for that and other things. Sheet, we do have a roll attachment that goes on the back of the printer. You can get as an upgrade. Um, that's when you'd want to do that. But as of right now, we're doing sheet, bi-directional. I'm going to at least look at the options, unidirectional, but I keep it on by. Uh, false. And then I like mix, but you can always play with these. I've also, I've used mix, I've used medium and large and I've used medium so it's all up to you how you like it I like the mix the best and then as far as my color first things first you want to go here this, if, as you can see this is not the setup that your the printer had remember when we had yellow we had black light I mean we had white white and then MC 
um, this is similar to that, but it's not that. So basically, you just want to make sure that you have the print uh, style set up, and it's this one basically. That that's basically yellow, black, white, white, magenta, cyan. And then what I do as far as this, I change my color to 45 or 50, and then I change this to 70. And that's my little go-to little secret. So basically, this is the amount of white that lays down behind the image, and then the amount of color. And for the sake of the video, I might just boost it up to 50. See what happens. You can do what you want. And then you can also save this and everything. And then when you get to this white screen, make sure this right here, 100% white under any color pixel, that's what you want. You don't want gradient white unless you do. And if you do want gradient white, uh, you, you can have that choice. Um, maybe I'll pull an image in so you can see the difference. But it just gives it a weird effect. That's all. Um, which I've used in the past. I got mine set to one. But what I'm going to try... Because I seen this in a DTF group, I actually saw. I actually saw someone say they set theirs to zero. Now I've never tried this, but we gonna see today. And what this does is, um, it basically like depending on where you click and find your picture. Like if you're creating your own images, you probably can do like two, three, four, even five because you created it. But sometimes when you download things from the internet, like my first print, I just tried to just print something because I got my printer and I was excited. So I printed out a Buzz Lightyear. Got it from online, went to go print it, and it had like a, a lot of like texture around the edges. It almost looked like I cut it without a silhouette like I just ripped it out and it just didn't look very appealing so I found out if you lower the pixels you get a cleaner image around the edge and I just thought that was dope so um for the most part I'm set up I'm only mad about this template part but for right now we're just gonna see um my girl got all kind of tumbler stuff in here and everything and I ain't need Christmas no more I can do this one though. I like this design. Shout out my girl Brittany. Um, oh, and there's a template. So I just maybe just because I had to load something in. I don't know. But basically, you want to stay within this border. That's this is my tray. This long one. That's my tray. And then this is the border of where I can print. So basically, you want to take this image and you want to make sure your images are PNG'd out, meaning no background. So, um, you want to take this image and mirror it. You can do it here, or if you go to layout, you see up here, you can just hit mirror right there. Or oh, that's rotate. You can hit mirror right there, and you can mirror it. Then you want to go over here, and you can, you can size it. Uh, you can size it crazy. And then I like to hit this to get it perfectly in the middle. as much as possible um um and then like I said you can go back to the white there's this cool little feature right here where you can see what it looks like if it's all white and you can see what color is gonna print so it's pretty cool but like I said and then look it already changed it to gradient you don't want gradient you want 100% white I want 100% white under anything, and because it changed it, I'm going back and look at all my settings. Everything looks good. It looks good. It looks good, and then put that back in the middle. I, and then you can get as close as this line as you want. Um, as far as sizing it, but keep in mind, you see how like no matter how much I size this, the left stays where it's supposed to stay. You want to keep that in mind. Like, basically what I try to do is when I'm printing out designs, like if I was printing this out design for real, I'd cut it um, a little closer. Because you can't do that once you're in here. Once you're in here, you're just resizing it. There's no cutting and all that. So you see how, like, no matter how big I make it, I'm past my line now with all this extra space for nothing. <laughs> so just keep it that in mind. Um, but see, like, I can do this, though. 
and cut it real close. It's a risk doing that, so because of that, I'm just going to keep it, keep it cordial, you know, you know. And then, like I said, you got other ones where you can put it top corner, um, just stuff like that. And then let's say you wanted to add more down here, all that has to be designed first before you go to print. So I couldn't even add more if I wanted to right now. So because of that, and it don't look weird, I'll just center it. And let me make sure my template is A3. Okay, uh, it looks really long. I don't know, maybe this design is just more thick. But anyway, that's it. That's all. Ready, set up to go. What I'll do is I'll just add, because uh, I had a couple people hit me up and was like, oh yeah, I want to see the time frame and all that. So, um... I'll pull, the, uh, pull it back out, and I'll do a nozzle check, and then we'll print this out, and we'll just see how it looks.